Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to make your own Viking Dragon Head Shipwreck Knife. Now this knife was inspired by my late uh, friend, Captain George Hopman. He had found uh, three different brass dragon heads while exploring uh, local New York and New Jersey shipwrecks. And that was kind of the inspiration uh, behind this knife. All of the material that used on this knife was recovered from local shipwrecks. Uh, the blade itself uh, was forged from an iron hull plate uh, recovered from a wreck called the Oregon. Uh, the brass was recovered from the Black Warrior, uh, and the wood was also recovered from the Oregon. Uh, wood is actually uh, a piece of teak. Now, a few challenges uh, involved in making a knife from, from shipwreck material. This, this particular iron was underwater for over 130 years. Um, I really thought I was going to be able to get a really good piece of iron out of it and we were going to forge some carbon into it to create steel and I'd be able to highly polish that blade. It didn't exactly turn out that way, uh, but I did like the final result. Uh, the particular wrecks that I got this material from, and these, these artifacts were recovered over the past you know, 20 years or so, um, are all off the south shore of Long Island. The Oregon was a passenger liner. She was sunk on March 14, 1886 uh, in a collision um, and she now rests in about 130 feet of water. Just a spectacular shipwreck. Um, a lot of marine life, a lot of artifacts, uh, really cool wreck to explore. Uh, the other shipwreck where I got the uh, brass spike from is a wreck called the Black Warrior. Now, the Black Warrior is a paddle wheel steamship. Uh, she ran aground in a fog uh, and sunk in 1859. Uh, she's in relatively shallow water, only about 35 feet or so. Now, the project started, I went to my friend Jason Northgard's uh, blacksmith shop, and he took that iron hull plate and he started to forge it flat. And this was quite a process. He hammered it for a long time. Um, actually hammered it uh, flat, elongated it, um, and the, the end result was I want to end up with a billet that was about a quarter inch or 3 16 in thickness and long enough uh, for my knife, which is you know, probably 10 or 12 inches in length. It soon became apparent that, that this material has a lot of characteristic flaws uh, and inconsistencies to it. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. This is the brass spike. He also heated that up and he was able to flatten that out relatively easily. Uh, and we, again, we flattened this one right down to about a quarter of an inch. That gave me a little bit of room to, uh, to do the carvings of the dragon head. This is the piece of steel. Uh, it's not iron anymore, now has carbon beat into it. Uh, but the ends are definitely frayed. You can see the, um, the grain uh, from that iron, etc. So a lot of this stuff is going to have to be cut away. Uh, the design of the knife, fortunately, fits within the, the good uh, steel in the center of this billet. So the process basically begins by tracing uh, my paper uh, sketch uh, onto the piece of steel. I just use a uh, Sharpie. I happen to use a, a gold or a silver colored Sharpie. It just uh, stands out nicely against the dark uh, steel. And it stays on there pretty well so that you can uh, do all of your grinding and cutting without losing that line. And I'm gonna make this blade uh, basically the same way that I've made the other blades. I, I use, I don't have all that many different tools, so I use a disc grinder uh, for the majority of the grinding. I start out with a cutoff wheel, and I just cut off uh, every piece of uh, steel that's not uh, within the uh, borders of that, of that sketched line. Uh, a lot of times I have to make you know, straight cuts in and then chop away little pieces, uh, but you just want to remove as much steel as possible uh, before you start grounding uh, all of those lines smooth and into the curves. The cutoff wheel does this very, very quickly. Now, just with, with any knife, we're going to do all of the cutting and grinding and smoothing and um, drilling holes through the handles. And, and then, you know, before we're going to add the handles, we will heat treat. Uh, and um, temper this blade. I even use that same cutoff wheel to start to carve the dragon head. Uh, this is going to be a full tang knife, which means that the uh, the handle or the tang of the of the knife is going to go uh, and completely under the handle, and that will match up with the brass um, liners. 
After I'm done with the cutoff wheel, I will switch to a grinding wheel on the same grinder um, to try to knock down all of these rough grooves and cuts and notches uh, from the, the straight end cuts with the cutoff wheel. The grinding wheel on the disc grinder does a very, very nice job, does a very quick job in smoothing out all of those rough edges and you can bring the knife right into those um, sketch marks, those marker uh, sketch marks to get your, your basic outline of the blade. I also use that same grinder uh, to kind of, kind of grind down um, towards the blade end to thin it out a little bit, remove as much material as I can and then I will eventually go uh, to a, one of those flap sanding uh, discs and those put a nice uh, put a nice polish on the blade. You can take it right down to uh, almost to sharpening um, to the point that you would sharpen it. Now once the blade is basically shaped, I'm going to move over onto the liners. Now these aren't really scales, they're not really handles. There's going to be a, a wood uh, scale over these, but these are going to be the liners and they are not carved out uh, to basically fit over um, the full tang blade. Now I have never done this before, it's a big learning curve, but I just used a variety of tools on a Dremel grinder uh, to cut out um, the shape and to add details into this dragon head. I cut out the basic outside shape with the same disc grinder um, and a little bit of on a belt sander, but then I used a Dremel grinder and here you see I'm just using a cutoff wheel to chop off small pieces um, and I used a variety of different tools. They make you know, little round headed carving tools and, and uh, oblong uh, cutting tools, V-shaped uh, tools for notches um, and I just used a variety of them in order to carve out uh, the teeth especially were kind of the hardest uh, and to add detail. Now here you'll see how these two uh, liners are going to overlap uh, the steel tang. The spines on the head of the dragon will uh, only be on the uh, on the tang of the knife. The teeth will only be on the brass liners and it kind of gives it a neat 3D effect. I'm going to go back to the Dremel and I'm going to add some, uh, some lines just with another small flat grinding wheel. And then I'm going to start to add detail. Uh, I've actually made some lines on the head with that same uh, cutoff wheel. And you just have to be real careful. You have to control each one of those cuts. In order to make the scales, uh, or the appearance of scales, um, I just took an oval shaped grinding tool and just pressed it in on the side and I overlapped I overlapped each one of those scallops uh, to create the scales. On the actual head, um, it kind of looked flat and dull, so I just took a round grinding tool and just made little spots. Um, and just it, it just adds a little bit of character, um, a little bit of texture, uh, and it, a little bit of separation so that you can separate the head from the body of the dragon. Now, once those liners are done, I moved back over onto the knife. I've already drilled the quarter inch holes through the handle. I'm using the same Dremel tool with a uh, drum sanding wheel uh, to do the spine final file work. Um, instead of using a file, I just find it very easy uh, to use a couple of different tools uh, on a Dremel grinder to create the spine work. And it does a really nice job. The next process, once the blade is completely finished, you have all the holes through it and you've, you've done all the grinding, all the, all the rough grinding, um, I wanted to heat treat this. Now instead of bringing it back to my friend's shop to have it heat treated, I decided to do it on a uh, fire pit forge. Uh, so I heated it up to the point where it was no longer magnetic and then quenched it very quickly in oil. Uh, after it's done heat treating, I'll clean it up a little bit um, and then I will actually uh, temper this by putting it into an oven uh, 375 degrees for three hours and then I let it cool overnight in the oven without opening up the door. And that seems to do a pretty good job of heat treating the blade as well as uh, tempering it so that it's not only hard, but it's also strong and, and not brittle. Uh, the next and one of the last uh, stages in this project is going to be to attach uh, the, the brass dragon head liners as well as the wooden handles or the wooden scales. I use a little bit of two-part epoxy and I mixed a little bit of black paint into that epoxy. That's a personal preference. Uh, you could certainly use clear epoxy if you wanted. 
Um, I'm going to assemble everything with uh, brass pins. I actually used a mosaic pin on these handles, which came out pretty nicely. And I clamped them all together um, with some wood and a vise or a couple clamps. And you, you walk away and wait for this to completely cure, uh, completely cure. Once the knife comes out of the clamp or out of the vise, I really all I have to do is finish sanding uh, down the handles, the wood handles, and the liners so that they match uh, perfectly to the spine of the knife and you can see that uh, file work and of course roll, uh, smooth out the handles a little bit, round them over a little bit on the top and on the bottom. Now this knife, this blade would certainly rust. You do have to oil this blade uh, but you'll see it has a lot of character, uh, almost Damascus type lines uh, in the actual steel. Of course, it's not folded, it's not Damascus, uh, but it has a, a, a very interesting antique looking blade to it. Just finishing up the handle. You see the tang work, and there's the finished product. A brass dragon head Viking shipwreck knife. The blade was made from an iron hull plate from the Oregon. Uh, the brass liners were made from a, a brass or bronze pin recovered from the Black Warrior. And the, uh, the scales or the handles were made from teak recovered from the Oregon. Here's the knife resting on uh, a piece of the actual hull plate which it was made from. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other videos. And if you like this video, I ask that you please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel.